Crocodiles are one of the most fearsome predators alive, due to features like their exposed interlocking teeth and armoured bodies, but also that they are some of the last surviving large reptilian predators. However, despite their very reptilian appearance, surprisingly, they are actually more closely related to birds than they are to any other reptiles alive today. This is because whereas birds have evolved and diversified into millions of different forms, crocodiles haven't changed very much at all, and have fossils of very similar relatives living over 200 million years ago. This is because their niche of living in their prey's water supply is so advantageous to survival that they haven't needed to adapt very much over time. However, although crocodiles may be the poster child for living fossils, this isn't really true, and actually crocodiles have evolved and changed a lot. There is a general rule in evolution that the further back in time you go, the more and more certain animals look alike, as you get closer to their common ancestor, because they are more closely related and have had less time to evolve and adapt to different niches. Turn the clock back 240 million years to the Triassic period, and the ancestors of crocodiles and birds look very similar. Crocodiles and birds both descend from a group of reptiles known as the archosaurs, that became really successful after the mass extinction that preceded the Triassic period, known as the Permian extinction. The reason why they became so successful is not entirely understood, but it is thought that they fared better than other animals in the conditions in the early Triassic, that were largely arid with fairly low oxygen levels. They quickly spread out and evolved to fill many predatory niches around much of the world at this time, and although it was difficult to tell, the ancestors of birds and the ancestors of crocodiles had already diverged from one another. Animals like Hesperosuchus were more closely related to crocodiles, and animals like Telia crater were more closely related to birds, despite them looking very crocodilian, because they hadn't had the time to heavily adapt to different environments. Despite looking so similar, the reason we know one group is more closely related to birds is because their ankle bones had adapted to help them be more stable while running, and the outcome was looking significantly more bird-like. In fact, the group of archosaurs with these ankles are known as the Ave Metatarsalia, which means bird ankle. Telia crater was very closely related to early proto-dinosaurs that could run on two legs for short distances, that were the precursor to dinosaurs being able to balance in a fully bipedal position and these ankles were a start in that direction. And around 100 million years later, the dinosaurs would give rise to the birds. However, due to the archosaurs being less specialised in the early Triassic, some crocodile relatives were also bipedal. Some even adapted to resemble early species of dinosaur, like a Fidia that looked like a small theropod dinosaur, but was actually more closely related to crocodiles. The reason we know they weren't just dinosaurs is because although they were bipedal, they had a very different anatomy in their hip and ankle bones. At the end of the Triassic, there was another extinction event. Although it was less severe than the Permian extinction, almost all of the archosaurs would go extinct, with the exception of the dinosaurs, and another group named the crocodiliforms, which were the ancestors of crocodiles. However, although the crocodiliforms survived, the dinosaurs actually benefited from the extinction. During the Triassic, most of the herbivorous animals were a group named the Decinodonts that were actually ancient relatives of mammals, and many of the largest carnivorous animals were giant quadrupedal archosaurs known as the Rauasuchians, that had some large members that could grow to around 7 meters long. These animals went extinct at the end of the Triassic, and during the earliest parts of the Jurassic, dinosaurs took over all their niches, becoming the overwhelmingly most dominant animals of the time. However, while dinosaurs were dominant on land, the crocodiles flourished in rivers, lakes, and swamps. Some of the earliest crocodiles that lived at the beginning of the Jurassic were known as the goniopholidids. It is known that they were semi-aquatic because their fossils have been discovered in aquatic habitats, but also they had something called a gola valve, which is possessed by modern crocodiles that allows them to keep their mouth open underwater while breathing through their nostrils. Goniopholidids looked incredibly similar to modern-day crocodiles. The Triassic-era archosaurs resembled crocodiles in being robust, long, armoured reptilians, but the goniopholidids took this to the next level, and would have fit in among any modern crocodiles today to the casual observer, despite being separated by over 190 million years. Goniopholidids had the same conical teeth of modern crocodiles, and this shape is used to grip prey and pull them back into the water, rather than shear their flesh like most terrestrial predators. This suggests they were ambush predators, like modern crocodiles, which is why they looked so similar. The lifestyle of being an aquatic ambush predator doesn't rely on very fast movement or improved metabolism, 
as they don't need to chase down animals over long distances, and isn't as reliant on a very specific type of prey as all animals need to come to the water to drink. Today it's large mammals, but 190 million years ago it was dinosaurs. The three families that make up the modern crocodiles, the alligators, crocodiles and gharials, had a common ancestor around 90 to 100 million years ago, meaning that nearly all placental mammals are more closely related to each other than the modern crocodiles are. However, this doesn't mean that crocodiles stopped changing in the Jurassic or the Cretaceous, and actually modern crocodiles are just the surviving members of a much more diverse group of reptiles. During the early Jurassic, a group of crocodiles known as the Thalatosuchians adapted to fully live and hunt in the sea. Some, like the Teleosaurids, became sleeker and better adapted for hunting at sea, rather than ambushing terrestrial prey. However, one group of them, named the Metriorhynchids, took this much further and evolved like whales, modifying their limbs into flippers and even adapting a tail fluke. Some of these crocs evolved into some of the largest oceanic predators of the time. In Madagascar, one of the largest terrestrial predators during the Cretaceous was actually a crocodile named Baurosuchus that had adapted to come onto the land and compete directly with dinosaurs. Some of the semi-aquatic kind also adapted to become considerably larger than modern crocodiles, like Sarcosuchus that lived around 125 million years ago and could grow to nearly twice the length of a Nile crocodile. Its size may seem like it indicates it could have devoured giant dinosaurs at the water's edge. However, its skull shape was quite different to modern crocs, and most likely wasn't able to be used in a death roll. This means it is unlikely that it would have been able to eat prey much larger than itself. However, the same isn't true of other giant crocodiles that lived around the same time. In the mid-Cretaceous, North America was home to an even larger crocodile named Dinosuchus that may have had some species that could have grown to around 12 meters long. Sarcosuchus was a dryosaurid, which is a group of crocodiles that no longer exists. However, Dinosuchus was a true crocodilian, and was more closely related to alligators than they are to crocodiles. Dinosuchus had very similar proportions to modern crocodiles, just scaled up. This may indicate it lived like most modern crocodiles, but had evolved to get larger simply to tackle larger prey. At the end of the Cretaceous, the asteroid struck, and the non-avian dinosaurs went extinct, but of course, the crocodiles survived. But crocodiles didn't just survive, and in fact several different crocodile lineages survived. The crocodile and alligators had already separated before the mass extinction, and both of them survived, but also other groups survived, but then just didn't survive to the present day. A lot of the reason that they survived were the same reasons they have survived in the past. The asteroid impact caused sweeping forest fires and tsunamis that destroyed much of the plant life around the world. This lack of plant life meant there wasn't enough food for the large herbivorous dinosaurs that in turn meant there wasn't enough food for the large carnivorous dinosaurs. Crocodiles were less impacted by this because they have incredibly slow metabolisms, meaning they can go without food for months at a time and maybe even over a year in extreme cases. This would have given them a big advantage over dinosaurs for instance that are much more active. Crocodiles are also happy eating almost anything and are happy scavenging, so would have had no issue chewing on rotting dinosaur flesh and dead animals that may have been left stricken for some time after the mass extinction. But also, when they did hunt the odd surviving animal as ambush predators, they wouldn't have needed to expend as much energy as other animals while hunting. The asteroid impact would have also kicked up a lot of dust and debris into the Earth's atmosphere, blocking out the sun, which would have brought temperatures down. Some research indicates that average global temperatures may have been brought down as much as 7 degrees Celsius. The alligators can survive in very low temperatures because they can enter into a sort of hibernation when it gets cold, and there are some extreme cases of them surviving in frozen swamps. Crocodiles aren't quite as resistant to the cold, but they can also go into a kind of stasis. So crocodiles are definitely long-lasting survivors. However, the idea that crocodiles stopped evolving isn't entirely true. Crocodiles that lived alongside the dinosaurs adapted into many new forms. It's just the semi-aquatic ones that are alive today are just one surviving expression of a large family that has been around for 200 million years. Thank you for watching. A big thank you goes to all my patrons, especially the big contributors that are listed here. If you like content like this, then consider becoming a patron as well.